when agencies like businesses start growing, they often hit a wall. What happens is that their clientele starts to grow and managing everything without a system starts to be a nightmare. The founders lose track of the client progress. They follow inconsistent processes. They struggle to scale and they end up stressed AF. And this not only limits the client capacity, aka income, but it also makes hiring much harder because we don't want to bring more people into our chaos. So well, after working with dozens of agencies, I have seen what works and what doesn't. And I have realized that I always follow four steps in order to create the systems that help them scale. And these are the steps that I want to share today with you. So if you follow them, you will end up with a repeatable system for all your clients and your capacity will rise. If this sounds like a plan, let's get into it. Okay, so step number one. First, we gotta define our ideal process. And this is basically the step-by-step -step that we go through since the very first contact that we have with our potential client till the very end of the fulfillment of the service. And the way that I typically do it live with my clients is we start in the very beginning and then I just simply ask, and what happens next? And then we figure out where, which are the options that can happen next. And slowly we build the process. So as an example, I have built a, this process over here. So this starts with a, with an introductory call. If it's not, good, not a good fit, then we bin it. If it's a good fit, then we send the contract. We wait for feedback. We have maybe some questions. This is a feedback loop. Then the contract sign. We send the Stripe link for the payment. If it's paid, then we do the onboarding with certain tasks. Then whenever the service starts, this is the the, serve, the part of the service delivery. This I, I made an example for a design agency. So we do the design work, wait for feedback. So first iteration, this will be the second iteration, and this will be the third and final iteration. And finally, we send the, the Stripe link for the last payment. We pay and that's it. Well, they pay, <laughs> no, we pay and, and that's it. Okay, so this is a, a, sample, a sample process. So the aim here is to create a repeatable process for every client because this is gonna be the only way that we will be able to scale because if for every client we are reinventing the wheel, then our agency will never scale. So we need to get here. If you're not able to create something similar, then you may have to revise your offer and make it more repeatable. Okay, so now that we have this, what do we have to do? So this is step number two, which is translate this into statuses. Okay, because in the end, our objective is to bring all of this into a project management tool. I'm gonna use Notion personally, but we cannot really bring this process because it's, it's still a little bit messy. It's just a definition. So we need to translate it into something that then we can implement in our project management tool. So what I typically do is I create here below an area and I'm gonna define which part of this process is going to translate into a status within my prayer management tool notion so this first step is going to be new lead okay we are waiting for for the call if the guy is interested send contract and wait for feedback so i believe these two are gonna be contract sent so this is the status that we are gonna see in Notion. The objective of these statuses is that they are fully descriptive. So when I read it, I know exactly where this client is in my pipeline. If I read contract sent, I know because this verb is in the past that this contract has been sent and therefore I'm waiting for the client's response. Okay, and then I'm gonna continue doing the same for, for the rest of the process. This will mean waiting for payment, for example. So this implies that we have already sent the client away to pay and we are waiting for them. And then once he paid, this could be, yes, onboarding. Sometimes these both are going to too much, but that's fine. Then this is our first iteration. So for the first two, preparing first cut, for example, Okay, you get the, the idea. I'm just gonna continue uh, with the rest. This is gonna be the same. Okay, here I'm seeing that I have two statuses for payment. This is waiting last payment. So then I would like that this is waiting for first payment. So we can distinguish them. And finally, when it's paid, the status can be finished. If we have after sales, maybe we, we need to continue the process, but this is just the, the example, okay? 
So here we have our, our process. And step number three is to bring this into our project management tool. So I'm gonna use Notion. I would like to create one page that holds all the databases in the, in the system. The reason is, so this is the only way in Notion that we can see all the databases that are powered in the workspace at a glance. Okay, and here what we're gonna need is a status property. And these statuses are going to become all these statuses that we have created down below, okay? So let me do the transfer, okay? And we have this over here. Of course, we will need more properties, I don't know, like the information about the client, etc. But here in this video, we're just gonna focus on the process, all the metadata and stuff. Uh, this you can figure out by yourself. Okay, so that was step three. Now, what is step four? Is to actually make this usable for the different teams that are gonna be involved throughout the whole process. And how are we going to do that? Well. In Notion, there is a feature called linked view of database that allows us to take this database that we just created and resurface it in other pages within our workspace to see what we need to see at every moment. What do I mean by this? So let's say that we have a sales team. So for the sales team, we will just want to show all the statuses that are sales related. Let me show you what I mean. We will create a leads page. Of course, I will always change this so it's somewhat beautiful. And here we do slash linked view of database and we take the leads and client manager, the database that we have created. And here I like to see this as a board view. Like this, we have these beautiful columns. Color columns because it's more beautiful like that and high database title because it's just ugly. So since this spans to white, I will select full width. And in this view, I will just filter by everything that is sales related, which is these three statuses, because once the guy has paid, then it goes to the fulfillment team. Now, save for everyone. And here we have a lot of statuses that we don't care about or that the, that the sales team don't care about. So let's go to group and to hide everything that we don't wanna see. And this will be our sales view, okay? So then, we could even duplicate this page for the design team. Okay, I'm doing this a little bit fast, but yeah, the idea will be the same, to modify the filter just when we have a client and it's within the design process. Just waiting final feedback because final payment is already the finance team is going to, uh, to take care of. And we will do the same with these properties. Okay, so let's say for example, that after the design team has finished working with the client, then we have to send all the files to our internal development team so they can implement the website that the design team has developed for the client. So we may have another dashboard for the development team. Okay, but you get the idea, right? We are just presenting the information that each team needs to see at a certain time. All the statuses are fully descriptive, so we will not have to lose time wondering what we have done with the client, what we haven't done, everything is always understandable. Just by following this process and implementing this, you will already feel a little bit of relief because at least you will know where each of your clients are and you know that you're gonna be following the same process for all of them. So just by doing this, you will be able to fulfill more clients at the same time and not be stressed about it. But of course, there is one part that is missing in this system that, and that will be the task management that we could have linked to this system. So then we can handle the to-dos and we can assign them to different people and everything. But that was not the purpose of this video, okay? If you are interested in knowing more about how you can use Notion for your own business, then you have a playlist around here, I don't know where it's gonna appear, where you can see how you can use this tool to maximize your agency's output. So that is it for today, guys, and as always, hasta la próxima.